Sarawa State Assembly dissolved. Britain approves take-at-home COVID pills in world first. Thanks for tuning in to Updates at Noon. I'm Renee Fong. Good afternoon. The Sarawak State Assembly has been dissolved with effect from 3rd November, following Yang Diputuan Agong's consent to revoke the statewide emergency. Sarawak Chief Minister Datuk Patinggi Abang Johari Tun Openg said the dissolution was proclaimed by Yang Diputuan Negeri Tun Abdul Taib Mahmud in accordance with Article 21, Subsection 2 of the State Constitution and Section 3, Subsection 3 of the Emergency Essential Powers Sarawak Ordinance 2021. And after having been advised that legal and public safety and health considerations have been put in place. In a special media conference this morning, the Chief Minister said the ruling Gabungan Parti Sarawak and GPS State Government consulted and advised the Yang Dipertuan agreed to seek the King's consent for the emergency to be terminated earlier in the spirit of their oath to preserve and protect the state and federal constitutions. Despite this, we also realize that the health and safety of the people of Sarawak is paramount. Therefore, in coming to this decision, we have had careful and constant engagement with the health authorities and other stakeholders in order for the election to be held with all the necessary standard operating procedures SOP in place. And the rates of COVID vaccination has achieved a level which would be acceptable by the authorities for the election to be conducted safely. He said the current state government will act as a caretaker until the state election is called, adding it was now up to the election commission to decide the election dates. A total of 254 nomination forms for the Malacca state election have been sold since they were made available on 18th October. A spokesman from the Election Commission EC headquarters said the forms have been sold at the EC offices in Putrajaya and Malacca. The spokesman said that the form purchasing process has gone on smoothly in both places. The EC advises prospective candidates to fill in the form and double check with the returning officer's office or the state election office prior to nomination day, which is on 8th November. Candidates are also advised to make the deposit payment in advance and the payment receipt must be brought on the nomination day as proof of payment to ensure that all subsequent processes can be carried out smoothly. The EC has said 20th November polling date for the Malacca state election while early voting will take place on 16th November. The election is being held following the dissolution of the state assembly on 4th October after four assemblymen withdrew their support for Chief Minister Datuk Sri Sulaiman Mad Ali. They are Datuk Sri Idris Harun, Datuk Nur Azman Hassan, Datuk Nur Hizam Hassan Bakti and Datuk Nur Effendi Ahmad. In a related development, the government will continue to monitor the prices of goods and products throughout the implementation of the Malacca state election. Deputy Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Minister Datuk Rosol Wahid said a total of 100 enforcement officers will be mobilised for this purpose. Walaupun mana pun kita mengambil peranan proaktif untuk melihat, meninjau dan memasau kemungkinan-kemungkinan yang berlaku sama ada kenaikan harga makanan, harga barang, keperluan dan sebagainya. Cuma bagi pengguna yang ada isu, yang ada masalah, lapor pada kita. Lapor macam biasa, sama ada melalui WhatsApp, lapor melalui uh, bebas tol ataupun melalui call kepada pejabat-pejabat kita untuk kita ambil tindakan. Segera. Yang penting, 
Setiap transaksi mesti ada resik untuk mudahkan tindakan. Malaysia is on track to revive its economy in 2022 through an expansionary budget announced last week. In an interview with Bloomberg, Finance Minister Tengku Datuk Sri Zafrul Tengku Abdul Aziz said the government has planned to minimize the economic scarring brought about by the COVID-19, bringing the economic growth to a medium-term trajectory. Tengku Datuk Sri Zafro said in terms of funding the debt, Malaysia has enough liquidity in the market. He further noted that the country has a diverse investors base and the government is confident that Malaysia will be able to raise the debts or bonds required domestically. Under the largest ever budget worth 332.1 billion ringgit, the government has introduced tax proposals including the prosperity tax, which involves a marginal increase in tax collection involving more than 230 large companies. He explained that the prosperity tax is a progressive tax of 9% which will assist the funding of the country's health care package during the COVID-19 pandemic. The government is also very bullish on the economy in 2022, driven by strong economic performance next year, with estimated growth of between 5.5% and 6.5%. The minister said Malaysia's fiscal and monetary policy were still accommodative and the government is looking to reduce the fiscal deficit to 6% of gross domestic product in 2022 from 6.5 percent this year. A total of 1,047 new variant of concern VOC cases, namely the Delta, has been detected from 29th October until yesterday. Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Nur Hisham Abdullah said this brought the cumulative number of cases, including SARS-CoV-2, categorized as VOC and variant of interest VOI, to 3,692. In a statement, he said of the total number of cases detected, 3,672 are the VOC and 20 the VOI. He further explained that the VOC cases up to now 3,432 are of the Delta variant. 226 are of the Beta variant and 14 the Alpha variant. Meanwhile, out of the VOI cases, 13 are of the Theta variant, 4 of the Kappa variant and 3 the Eta variant. Tan Sri Dr. Nur Hisham added, these cases were detected through a continuous study conducted by the Institute of Health and Community Medicine, UKM Medical Molecular Biology Institute, Integrative Pharmacogenomics Institute and Malaysia Genome Institute, MGI. You're back with me, Renee Fong. National men's top single shuttler Li Zixia marched into the quarterfinals of Halle Open in Germany after he ended Irish players' journey that Dan Ngu Yen at the second round of the tournament yesterday. However, it was not plain sailing for second-seeded Zixia as Nguyen gave a great battle before the Malaysian badminton star took the first set 22-20. The 22-year-old Kedahan player then ensured his last eight berth when he edged out Nguyen 21-16 to meet the eighth-seed shuttler Kantapun Wang Choren of Thailand next. Kantapun had earlier saw of Indian player Surab Verma 21-12, 21-18 in the second round. And that concludes today's updates at noon. Making the headline today, Sarawak State Assembly dissolved. And don't forget to tune in to News at 10, coming up at 10 p.m. available on Saluran Berita RTM YouTube channel, RTM Clicks website and mobile app. I'm Renee Fong. Thanks for watching and have a pleasant afternoon.